Good morning, everybody. It's Tracy on another episode of What Has Changed Your Life. Today, I have the lovely Karen here. Now, the reason I wanted Karen on here is because we are gonna we're gonna unpack some real stuff today. We're gonna unpack life today, and I really wanted everybody to be here to join us as we go through the different humps and challenges of life. Karen is actually a cancer, a fellow cancer survivor. She um, is also divorced, gone back to school at 40 to re rethink herself. She's a massage therapist. She is a uh, into nutrition, coaching, huge health and wellness advocate. And so I wanted her on here today to chat with us. So bring your questions, like and share this video. And welcome, Karen. <laughs> thank you, Tracy, for the warm welcoming. And thank you for having me as your guest today on your show. I'm super excited. And, and oh, I'm, so uh, happy you're I'm, here. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. So you have so many different things under the health and wellness umbrella. And we'll get into that shortly. But what I wanted to do was start with your mm -hmm. cancer journey or your divorce. Which one came first? And how did you handle those life curveballs that were thrown at you? Uh, great question. Um, so gosh, I think it's been about 11 years now that I've been cancer free. Thank you. Yay. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited. And it's interesting how life does throw you curveballs and actually how much when you speak to the universe, how much it actually will respond back. And I used to be a big smoker. And I remember every day I was quitting smoking. And every day I'd light up a cigarette and get mad at myself. And I remember sitting, I hadn't smoked for like three or four hours. And I was so proud of myself. Yay, look at me go. I'm doing really well. I get in my car, find a cigarette. And I'm like, and I lit it up. And I looked in the mirror and I was so angry with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, quit. What would it take for you to quit smoking? Yeah. I care what you put out there. Two weeks, yeah. later, I found out, two weeks later, I found out I had cancer. So, what type of cancer did you have, if you don't mind? I had I had, I had thyroid cancer. Um, oh. So you know, it was enough to scare me, like a lot, scare me. And from there, then I went, okay, I got to quit smoking, and I got to change up my lifestyle. I was eating a lot of fast food, you know, smoking a lot of cigarettes, and not leading a great life. <laughs> so I quit smoking, went and had surgery, had it all done. I've been cancer free, like I said, for eleven years, and it got me on the journey of health actually because as you said as you mentioned before i'm a massage therapist so this happened after i graduated from school mm -hmm. so then it got me thinking about you know maybe i should learn something about nutrition because i learned that food can heal your body yeah i was like i you know i always heard you know you are what you eat but it never really made a lot of sense to me until i started learning more about the body and about health so that's yeah. what got me on this path of you know, nutrition and, and, um, and health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And the cancer, I mean, I don't know how you felt, but when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was only 39 when I first was diagnosed and the mortality and the weight of that, like a brick wall slams you in the face and you're like, what, this is happening to me. Like, holy mm -hmm. crap. Right. And oh. I, how did you feel when you were given that diagnosis? I was just, how do I get it out of me? Mm -hmm. That was it. That's all I thought. I was like, okay, let's get it out and move on. That was how I thought. And, um, but it's sometimes, you know, it's like, do we, do, you know, our body is forever speaking to us. Mm -hmm. And we get shocked when all of a sudden we get a diagnosis of whether it be cancer or any disease in our body, right? But our body is forever speaking. You know, our digestion, our energy, our hairs, you know, is it falling out? Are we gaining weight? Are we, you know, aches and pains and that kind of thing? And, you know, was my body speaking to me at the time? Maybe I was exhausted all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't looking after myself, right? And then yeah. it's like, you know, well, what do I need to do to change this? Well, it was, um, you know, the, the universe saying, here, I'll show you cancer. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll, stop you, you. Yeah, I'll stop you. Are you paying <laughs> attention, right? Because we yeah. don't pay, as humans, we don't pay attention to all these things until the message, what I say, until the message gets louder. Yes. Right? So 
message got loud for me. It got really loud. So that's, okay. I just was like, what do I need to do to get rid of it? And let's move on. And then Liz says hi and good morning. Oh, hi, and, Liz. And Caroline is also giving us waves this morning. Oh, good morning. Hi, Caroline. Hi. <laughs> welcome, yeah, welcome. It's, it's, it's funny. You're absolutely right when you say the body does speak to us because, you know, for me, I was doing so much stuff back then. And I sometimes find myself getting in that habit of doing too much and then your body's like hi <laughs> you can't do all that. <laughs> by the way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make you so tired that you need to sleep yeah. and even and that is true even today when i get so overworked then i get very tired and i've learned how to rest God. which is something that took me a lot of time to learn Mm -hmm. Right. And that was because exactly what you say, your body is speaking to you. Yeah. And your body, your body can't heal if we're living in fight or flight, meaning you're being chased by a bear, got to run. Your body goes into that, that fight or flight. It's not yeah. going I need to digest the food. I need to heal the body. I just need to go. It's saying I need to run. And, yeah. and, and then it gets exhausted. And then it gets tired. Exactly. Yeah, gets tired. So you, then you go back to school, you do the massage therapy, the nutrition, learn about all of that and how it nourishes your body. Yeah. And what advice would you give someone a tip for them if they were looking at, at changing their eating habits and their way of life in that way? What one give one tip that you could tell somebody to change? I would say just one thing I do is teach people awareness. Mm -hmm. And um, just one little thing. Pay attention to A, what you're eating every day and how you feel. I'm super in tune with my body. So I know if I'm exhausted, I'm not eating well, <laughs> right? So, but maybe just change up one thing, you know, like maybe just drink a little bit of lemon water in the morning, you right? Know, or just pay, pay a little bit of attention to what you're fueling your body with because our body doesn't recognize fast food, junk food, and that kind of stuff as, as, as nourishment. Right. right. So maybe you cut out one little thing. That's one little thing you've cut out. If right. I, yeah. And just be aware. Just really pay attention to where you're at through the day. And I teach people little simple tools to do that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's awesome. And yeah. just like one of the things that I do is I, I'm very mindful. I do when I talk about food at home, I actually meal plan it. That and I sit down and I write what I'm okay, this is what we're having for dinner. And this, yeah, it takes more time. But having said that, then there's no, um, there's no second guessing, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? Oh, I don't have time. I need to just grab whatever. Mm -hmm. right? And I find that that's what a lot of people do, because they don't have time, right? Yeah. I like but to, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so I like to meal plan. So what, so is that something that you would recommend as I'm telling you? This is what yeah. I do. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, I do recommend meal planning if that's it. So one of my things coming into the new year is getting more organized and having yeah. more structure. And yeah. I don't have, if for those who know me, I don't have a lot of structure, but it works sometimes. But um, so this is, Meal planning is one of the things I, I want to work on for myself, right? And make like, you know, um, some meals that I can freeze because I'm being single. I, I you know, I don't want to have to cook every day. <laughs> I really don't, you know? So it, it's nice to pull something out of the freezer that I've already made and, yeah. and whip together some vegetables or salad or something. Right? Yeah. So yeah. It's just really making things a lot easier for you. Exactly. Right. And then there's that taken that little bit of stress is taken out of your life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Caroline, and then you're not running to the fast food. Thank you, Caroline, for that lovely little comment. I appreciate all your support. She's one of my, my biggest fans. Oh, <laughs> hi, Caroline. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Oh, are we losing Karen? Are we losing Karen? Are you still there, Karen? You're frozen on my end. Oh, hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, sir. can you see me now yeah I can see you now. perfect hello so okay so good. going back to school you do the nutrition you do the massage therapy at what point did you 
figure out that your marriage was not where it should be. <laughs> if I look back now, I figured it out a long time ago. No, um, you know, I used to, when I was, ma I was married for 16 years and we're still friends. So I'm very grateful for that. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, wasn't, we weren't meant to be together and I kept blaming him for a lot of things. You know, you don't do this. You don't do that. I'm judging him. And I didn't realize I was judging him until I learned about judgment, but uh, that's another conversation. And then, you know, I started realizing like, why am I, why are we together? I felt like we were roommates, actually. Mm -hmm. And when I turned, when I was turning 50, you know, I to, to, um, to uh, Italy and he didn't want to go to Italy. He wanted to go to a beach somewhere. Right. And I don't know. It's weird. It's weird how things happen. And when I was turning 50, I was like, I just kind of looked back going, okay, this is how the first part of my life looked like. What do I want the second part to look like? Yeah. And I, and I didn't see him in my future and it freaked yeah. me out. It scared me because, you know, we used to be in love and, and, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And yeah. somewhere along the line, we just went in different directions and I didn't see him. And like I said, I didn't see him in my future. And so I left. Yeah. I left and, and it was scary. It was really scary. I was going to say that takes a lot of courage because a lot of people are, I can, I can see people going, well, you know, you were together, blah, blah, blah. And even in their own marriages and they're thinking, oh, you know, well, maybe we just got to work on this or maybe we just got to work on that. Or maybe we should stay together for the kids or maybe we should do this. And may, you know what I mean? Like all those things start piling up. So it takes a lot of courage to say, yeah, I'm kind of done with this and yeah. I want to move forward. Yeah. And, and we're That's so huge. Yeah. We're so programmed. You know, you, you grow up, you go to university, you go to college, you get married, you have kids, you know, you live together forever, no matter what. Yeah. The right? status and I quo. Think the status quo. The and status I, just, quo. I, I never followed rules growing up. I never, I never, yeah, I didn't go to college, didn't go to university. I mean, I did go back to school at 40 for massage. I, I couldn't relate to a lot of school growing up. Mm -hmm. anyway that's the thing so but for me it's like but I don't want to be miserable the rest of my life either and yeah. I didn't know when I when I um when I left and finally we lived together for a year and then I finally we finally moved apart and I remember sitting there at my place going there's feedback somewhere I think somebody's is there feedback somewhere yeah. that might be the kettle <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. <what>? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It sounded like there was like a lot of feedback. So my apologies. No, so I think that was the kettle. Oh my gosh. That's so I was trying to make his breakfast quietly. The poor guy. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> and, yeah. Anyway. So um, I'm yeah. hoping you wouldn't notice. <laughs> well, I don't know if it, it sounded like somebody speaking. So it wasn't, it doesn't sound like a, a kettle. Anyway. So it's all good. <laughs> The joys Sorry, of the dog. You gotta take your kettle somewhere else. <laughs> That's he, okay. he actually has the kettle and he's walking elsewhere with the kettle. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Because sometimes I find there's like a leg and then there's feedback. So oh, I wasn't yeah. sure if it was that. No, have a, hey, I've got my I've got my tea as we as we speak. So uh, I haven't had mine yet. <laughs> so anyway, um yes. I lost where I was. Um we were talking about the divorce and sitting at your place and yeah. going so forward from we that don't, spot. Right. So it's just, yeah, I mean, we've got one life to live and let's live it on purpose, I believe, you know, yeah. and I remember sitting outside my place here and I live in the country and it's beautiful. And I remember thinking, oh my God, what just happened? And then it was like, sink, and then it was like sink or swim, right? Am I yeah. either going to, you know, sink or am I going to yep. pick myself up and go okay who am I right who is Karen so I right. went on a, I went on a healing journey I had to go on a healing journey and just go find me like, yeah and, and it's still really it's hard to um when you're when you go on one of those journeys to figure out who who are you right as a person there's a lot of stuff that over time we have taken and we've like, we're not going to talk about this. So we're going to stuff it. 
we're going to stuff it right down here, deep, deep down, and we're not going to talk about it. And yet, those are the things that we have to discover and unpack so that we can move forward, right? And some of that stuff is really hard mm -hmm. and it's really deep, right? Yeah. Did you find that on your journey? Oh, yeah. And I'm still on that journey because I think it's a forever journey, right? It is and forever. I remember, you know, like I, I have, you know, different streams of income and I went to a, a big training event mm -hmm. and uh, a few years, four years back, five years, four years ago. And I remember the speaker saying, if your business hasn't changed in the last year, go find out what, a what your blocks are. I didn't even know what a block meant. So I went and I hired a coach and then started discovering that deep stuff that we bury, right? Yeah. So, and, you know, started finding out some issues I had around success and, you know, self-worth and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's just, it's important to dig deeper. It's burying it because I believe these buried emotions is what contributes to disease in our body. Yeah, absolutely. Because they fester, right? All yeah. those emotions fester and if you don't release that energy changes things right exactly exactly so now you're on a different mission you put all right. this together and now you're on this this 50 and free which i love the title by the way Thank and if somebody you. was approaching 50 <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, so, <laughs> so 50 and free is about I decided to rebrand myself and this is all very new you know yeah. and and thank you for actually for me I'm kind of grateful for what in some weird and twisted way for what's going on because it's kind of helped give me the kick in the butt that I needed you know right. and in so many ways in so many ways but um yeah so I decided to um, if you're approaching your fifties or in your fifties and feeling stuck, you know, maybe the kids have moved away. Maybe, yeah. you know, you're in a relationship you're not happy with, or maybe you you're divorced and kind of going, okay, well now what do I do? Right. So yeah, exactly. there's, there's, you know, all kinds of things that we face in life and maybe you just need someone to kind of guide you. So I'm creating a roadmap to 50 and free. So it's just simple tools you know, kind of get helping to to get you unstuck is what I think. So that's sort of where 50 and free is going. And under that is nutrition. Um, I'm also a massage therapist. And, and there's also a business opportunity if people are interested in earning some more income. Added well. income. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because I find around 50, I didn't have, I myself, I didn't have a problem turning 30. I didn't have a problem turning 40. But 50? I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> there are more years behind me than ahead of me. Right? Yeah. And it's almost like you, you're you like, ooh, this is big. Yeah. Right? And then I'm like, because I remember as a kid, when I looked at somebody who was, and I, I get, this is from a kid's perspective, but when you looked at somebody, like your parents or whatever, you're like, man, they're old, right? But they're only right. But then I look at myself and I'm like, do I look that old? <laughs> I feel that old. What do I look like? You know what I mean? Like you start all these things at turning at that age, right? Mm -hmm. you're, it starts going through your head and you're like, ooh, wow, this is big. Yeah. Like this is a big number, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then I know people are like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. 50 is not that big of a deal. But I know for myself, 50 is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard, yeah. And for me, it was always like, there's got to be more to life than what I was living. And when, yeah. and when I reach and, and I, I've said this, oh gosh, I've been saying this forever. I feel like and yeah. just all of a sudden it just, yeah. Like 50 is like, wow, there really, there has to be more than this, just this. Right. Yeah. And I knew I wanted to live on purpose and I didn't even know what that meant. Yeah. Right? So now yeah. since for my journey, I'm kind of, I, not kind of, I am understanding what my purpose is, you know, mm -hmm. and, and learning about my whys and, you know, digging even deeper into my own, my own stuff that I've buried. It's starting to come up and, and, um, you know, it's just the next, it, it, it takes you to the next level. The more you heal, the more you can live the awesome person and be on purpose that you're meant to be. Right. right? 
and and a lot of people it's it's scary it's scary to dig up stuff from your past and stuff you've buried yeah right absolutely. and also too when you're hitting a certain age you know like you said you touched on earlier your kids are growing up my kids are 19 now and for a lot of women their whole life has been raising their children yeah so when they hit this point in life they're like um what do i do now yeah. right my kids don't need me anymore they're all you know grown up they i shouldn't say they don't need you anymore it's just different how they need you mm -hmm. right then so then they then they get lost mm -hmm. because they're not sure what their role is in life anymore yeah right it was always raising the kids i was so and so's mom right and so and so's wife and then they're like well what do i where do i fit in like i don't have a role and that's a huge huge thing for women yeah right because you don't know where you're going right yeah. yeah and then that's where a bit of a crisis comes in and also mm -hmm. too we start going through the changes right menopause perimenopause those things are happening yeah right and those are big as well yeah so yeah so figuring out like you said 50 and free and figuring out your whys and what your purpose your new purpose is Mm -hmm. right yeah and what's really cool is we get we get to create we get to create actually the life we want mm -hmm. and we're so hard to wrap our head around this and understand that because i'm like what do you mean i get to create the life i want what does that mean right like, yeah. but as my from my journey it's like we really actually do get to create whatever life we want whatever movie we want to play and I, and I like to explain that to people because we're not programmed this way. We're programmed one way, but then as you go on this, this kind of journey, you kind of learn, it's like, oh, I can change that programming. Yes. I can actually do what I want without guilt, without shame, without yes. whatever. Right. So this is, this is what I like to help people with or guide them to, to, you know, the roadmap, you know, maybe you need to go here. Maybe you need to go there. So. Yes. Yeah. And as you pointed out earlier, people are stuck in that status quo. This is what you have to do. By this time, you have to be doing this. And this time, you have to be having kids. And this time, you have to be, you know, doing this and that. And yet, it's all this boom, boom, boom. And as you and I have both experienced, life throws you, throws shit at you. It just, here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take you out of this nice timeline that you have because we're gonna we're gonna throw stuff at you and we're gonna this is what life is right and then you have to roll with it and that's where that thinking of we need i know for myself i was like wait a minute i want to do this this and this i should be doing this this and this why am i not doing this this and this yeah. right especially after my cancer because i was like what why am I going along with this when I, it's it's me, first of all, that needs to make me happy? It isn't someone else. And how do I do that? And I think that's, you know, where you come in for a lot of people with that roadmap, because there isn't a roadmap for women to figure out where they want to be and where they want to go, however long or short their life is. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And we don't know how long our life is, right? Like people can either. You know, we can either live in fear, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. or we can go just, if today was the last day that you had on this planet, how would you live it? Would you live it in fear or would you want to be on purpose? Yeah. I think, I think that's, but that has helped me out, especially through all of this. That's what's helping me out daily. You know, yeah. I, I can get caught up in the fear. I'm still a human being at the end of the day, yeah. right? And I can get caught up in everything. I don't, you know, but then it's like, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I believe I'm giving my power away. It's like, take my power back to me. Yeah. Today was the last day. Do I want to live it in fear or do I want to live it on? Who can I help today? If I can inspire one person a day, I am so happy. So happy. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's really what it's all about, right? Yeah, is helping and helping ourselves, helping other people, having that purposeful life. It's yeah. what it's really all about when you get yeah. down to the bottom nitty gritty of it, right? Yeah, yeah. How do we want a legacy? How do we want to be remembered? You know, yeah. it, it is. Uh, 
Yeah, but, it, but it's a choice. Yeah. Do you want to look back when you're, you know, when that day comes, when, you know, unfortunately it happens to all of us, when that day comes and our life is done, do you want to live with regret? Mm. You know, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't want to. No. You want to live the way that you're meant to live. And I think it's, I personally think what you're doing is phenomenal because oh, I you. know I do, there's so many people out there, so many women that need to figure out what their purpose is. And I think that having that guide is so important because then they get lost, right? Yeah. And that's, I think it's brilliant to have a roadmap to all of that. Figuring out your why, your purpose. I think it's, I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you. And then, you know, when I finally realized life is a journey, you know, I, I'm going to use my recent one around exercise. You know, okay. and yes, I am sitting a lot more than I was, right? And yeah. and I'm now I'm back into being active again. But I was like, man, you know, I want to lose weight. I want to be fit. I want to have that, you know, nice body and all that kind of stuff. But it, but then I'm not doing it, right? And then and then I would and I and I'm working on not being as hard on myself anymore. Yeah. And that's that's a challenge. <laughs> that's a challenge, and that's what I'm yeah. my challenge right now. What I'm going through. And then I was like, and then I one day thought about it. I'm like, it's the journey. Mm -hmm. It's not how quickly you do it. No. Right? It's not how quickly you get physically, you know, fit, healthy, this and this. It's it's the journey. It's the stepping yep. stones to get to feeling healthy, feeling fit, whatever that looks like. Everybody's different. You know, yeah, I'm not different. a skinny little model or anything like that. And I'm okay with that, right? But do I want to be healthy? Yes. Do yes. I want to be physically fit? Yes. And mentally fit, right? So yeah. it, it's the stepping stones. It's the journey through this life. Yes. And you're absolutely right. Because any journey, you know, when I talk, you know, have, pay, have clients come and say, you know, I want to lose weight. It didn't come on fast. It's not going to come off fast. Yeah. Right. And at 50 years old, I mean, you're going to look great however you are in your own skin. Yeah. Is it achievable to look like, you know, like we were in our 20s? Absolutely not. Because guess what? Some of us have had children. Some of us have gone through cancer treatment, chemotherapy. That's me. Those mm -hmm. drugs have changed the way I look. So we, we need to learn how to accept ourselves as we are today mm -hmm. in this moment and be happy with that. Yes. Yes. Right? And unfortunately, sadly, as you know, social media has all these pictures of all these people who, you know, look like they have these beautiful lives, right? And none of it's real. Half well, the time. People, yeah, and, and, and it's interesting people's perception. Again, that could be a whole other talk around <laughs> perception. Yeah. But it's interesting when I, I was speaking with a friend of mine last night and she's like, and, and I'm telling her some stuff that I'm going through right now. And it's just part of, again, it's part of my journey, right? And, yeah. and and it needs to show up so I can get to the next level in my life, right? Yeah. So I have to, and I have to heal it. But yeah. she, goes, she goes, oh, Karen, she goes, you're so hard on yourself. And I don't see you this way. And she's telling me how she sees me. And it's funny. I said, but you don't live in my head 24-7, yeah. right? So yeah. again, this is what I teach people about just awareness of our thoughts. And yeah, uh, but it's interesting. But it's again, it's all perception, right? So yeah, perception and perspective, right? Perspective, and yeah. This is very powerful when it comes to that negative chatterbox, that negative self-talk. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's it can be debilitating, debil debilitating. I can't even talk to it. Debilitating at times, right? Because you're listening to this when you're not seeing what's right in front of you. Yeah. We're right. So We're so disconnected. So right. disconnected. Mind, body, spirit. Right. Like my husband said to me the other day, he said, you know, you're very good at picking out the really good things about other people, but you can't pick out the good things that you have in your own life. Crazy. It's crazy. Us humans have everything backwards. <laughs> you know, we really do. The more I learn about being human, yeah. The more the more I go, wow, do we ever have things backward? 
We'll give yeah. our shirt off our back for other people. I hear this all the time. Oh, I give my shirt off my back for, for anybody. It's like, okay, great. What do you do for you? What do you do oh, for I you? Don't, I don't do anything for me. I don't have the time. Yes. Right? And we're also be doing a post around that. And and women are programmed that we are supposed to give to others. Like we're supposed to give to our husband. We're supposed to give to our children. We're supposed to give to this, to that. And we're programmed from a very young age that that's our role. And this is how we're supposed to do it. And by the way, if you do something for yourself, you're selfish. And yeah. that is something we have to, we have to get rid of that stereotype because that's so not true. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. I took a weekend this weekend and I just, I just, I, you know, I really enjoyed my weekend. I took time for me and there yeah. was guilt. There was guilt. I'm like, oh my God, I should be doing my posts on post, uh, social media. I should be doing, I should be doing this, this is old programming, but it's like, no, you know what? Enjoy. I just, you know, I deserve to have time for me. And yes. however, right. So yes. self-care that, is necessary. It is not selfish. And that's, that's right. To change. Yeah. Right. And you are absolutely no good to anyone else if you're sick, if you're not healthy. Yeah. Right? We are no good to anyone else if we are in that place. I agree. So, I agree. Yeah. So how Sorry. do people get in touch with you, Karen, if they want to use your incredible wisdom and knowledge? Oh, fantastic. Um, you can find me on Facebook under 50 and free. It will have, um, yeah, under 50 and free coaching. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn. And I'm now learning about TikTok. <laughs> I hear this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Actually, I honestly, I have to say, I'm having a little bit of fun on TikTok. <laughs> I have to be honest. You got to wean out some of the, the, the some of the people, but uh, it's okay. It's, um, it's entertaining, I have to say. But, um, yeah, so that's where you can you can reach me and I have my, and my website is on all of that. What's your website? I didn't, uh, let me put that up there too. Sure. It's 50 and free. So spelling out the word and. And 50 and free.com.ca.ca.ca. Dot .ca. Dot .ca. Dot .ca. And I'm on LinkedIn. All right. Let me just uh, put that website up there. Is that correct? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Karen, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of What Has Changed Your Life. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. And if anybody is looking to figure out what their purpose is and where they go from here, contact Karen. She would love to help you. She's been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you next time on What Has Changed Your Life. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. See you next time.